so just bear with me. We're going to be talking today about how to overcome self-judgment and criticism. So let's do this. Well, good, good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's really good to be with you today. And um, I am coming to you today to talk about something that feels really important, especially in the wake of the two suicides that happened last week, um, both Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain. Um, I, I know I'm not the only, no, you know, it's ru jostled up, um, unsettled a lot of us. And so, you know, so much of that pain that would cause us to take our own life, I mean, that so much of that stems from shame and really not feeling, you know, in some way feeling deeply broken inside. And so, you know, and often this can come from, uh, a, you know, the deep self-judgment and self-criticism that can invade our inner space and take over our lives in such a way that over time it just starts to feel like the voices of doubt and judgment and shame that come up inside of us are actually true. And if we start to buy into them, you know, and, and believe that they're true and live our lives either in denial of what they're telling us or really defending ourselves against the possibility that there really is something wrong with us, then we really suffer. And so how do we overcome the um, voice of self-judgment and inner criticism? Um, that's what we'll be talking about today. So take a deep breath in through our nose and exhale side out. Allow yourself to arrive fully here in your body. So as you're beginning to feel yourself from the inside out, you might even beginning, be hearing me coming into my breath. So you can do the same. Dropping out of your thinking mind Marilyn, welcome. Dropping out of your thinking mind and allowing your awareness to come down and settle into your belly, into your low belly. And becoming aware of this part of your body, literally the center point of gravity in your body that connects you to the source, wisdom of all things. Allow yourself to be aware of this part of your body as you're receiving these words and anything here that you're needing to hear right now in your life to help you connect to the deep source of ease and peace that is always available within you. Uh, so how to overcome self-judgment and criticism. I mean, uh, from as long as I can remember, there's been this sort of inner tyrant, this, uh, this fear voice that lives in my own mind. And, um, you might be familiar with this, this character, this inner voice as well, that, um, you know, either is criticizing me for the way I've acted, what I've said, what I've done. I mean, you know, do you ever get in this thing where you have a conversation with someone and then you go back and you keep thinking it over and over again in your head, replaying what you said and how they took it and how they responded? I mean, you know, this is, like we can really torture ourselves with our own self-criticism. And then, you know, there's the, 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 the inner voice of fear that's always catastrophizing and dwelling in worst case scenarios. I mean, let's just like acknowledge that. Anyway, you know, this was my, you know, I, I, when I was little, I used to have anxiety. I had a little bit of depression and, and suffered from panic attacks. Um, it, it's, intermittently throughout my life until I was about 26 and I found meditation. So, um, you know, you might relate. I'm sure that you do relate in some way if you're listening to this, to having that, uh, voice of doubt and criticism, the inner critic, you know, it's also been called the inner gremlin, 
Okay, Annie Lamott says, my mind is like a bad neighborhood. I never go there alone. You know, you might take a moment just to check out what is your own mind up to right now? Is it your biggest cheerleader? Or is it condemning you in some way, shape, or form? Like, just take a moment and check that out. This is the first piece of overcoming it is to start to get aware of it because it's only in becoming aware of the way our mind is like the untrained mind is like a bad neighborhood. And until we get clearer about what our minds are up to and how we're talking to ourselves, I made a post last week that uh, said, um, be continuously aware of how you talk to yourself, you know, because as we bring awareness to that, we start to understand, you know, wow, a lot of the time I am not a friend to myself. I'm actually, you know, an enemy to myself. Um, that insight is really important in, in cultivating something different. And so the first thing we want to start to do is get more familiar with what our minds are up to. And the best way to do that is to meditate. Um, as you meditate, as you learn to meditate, what you're doing, if you're, med you know, if you're engaging in mindfulness meditation, is you're learning to unhook from your thinking by simply bringing non-judgmental awareness to it. And then you start to identify that there's an aspect of your being that is always aware and witnessing what's happening. We can call this the witness. Although I'm not extremely big fan of that because somehow that feels a little disembodied and the way I am work with this and the way I teach it with my clients is much more embodied sort of experience of awareness. But whatever you choose to call it, that's what meditation does is we start to abide more in that space that notices. And that space is directly connected to the wellspring of peace and ease and joy that lives within us, that lives in our own hearts. So because we're so addicted to judging ourselves, somehow you think <laughs> that by like really beating yourself up, you're gonna stop doing those things that aren't good for you or for others anymore, right? And um, it, it comes from this assumption that there's something wrong with you and it needs to be fixed. And so you're in this mode of like always trying to like fix or change your experience. And this all comes from a place of deep feeling of insufficiency or deficiency or fear. I hope this is making sense. And so our inner criticism is actually born out of a way to, you know, fix us up so that we could get the love that we needed from the big people in our lives when we were little. But now that we're grown up, we don't need, we don't, we actually can see that that um, belief was an error in the first place. This belief that you're broken, that there's something wrong with you, you know, there was something wrong with me, that has you worrying and cat catastrophizing and, you know, dwelling on the problems, you know, that's actually not true. It was a story that we had to make up so that we wouldn't have to face the truth that, <laughs> you know, our caregivers are imperfect and they have limited capacities to meet our needs because they're human. And when we're kids, we, it's, that's, that's, we, 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 we're, we're naturally developmentally self-centered, narcissistic, not in a bad way, it's just our developmental process. And we're all, by the way, narcissistic in some ways. Um, you know, when we can start to own that as adults and just not be judgmental around it, it can keep it from coming out sideways, <laughs> which happens a lot in social media. And, you know, and people can have actual disorders where they're, they're really hooked and locked into their own narcissism. And that's beside the point. The point being, as I share this, is that 
um, when we're little, we need to believe it's our fault because then we can, at least we can control it in some way. But now as adults, we can start to see that that whole premise, that whole belief just simply isn't true and that it causes a lot of suffering. And are you willing and ready to let it go? This idea that you're broken Are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to try something different? So just like sense that, like, because part of this process of cultivating, overcoming self-judgment and criticism has to do with cultivating um, what we might call a sweet mind or a kind heart, a loving heart. And since most of our hearts are well-trained in being cold and defensive, we want to first forgive ourselves for that because it was the best we could do. And then now we need to be willing to do something different. And sometimes we can be resistant to that. I was just working with a client who was having a really hard time believing that she was worthy of kindness, just unconditionally. I mean, this was really a hard pill for her to swallow. And so you got to be willing to lean into that and even swallow, you know, like the truth that, you know, or, or just st start to tolerate the idea a little bit more that you're enough as you are, that you're not broken and that you are worthy. As the Buddha said, no one is more worthy of your love and affection than you are. So you... You really have to call forth the first thing. First thing is learning to meditate, to unhook from your thinking. The second thing is to sense into this willingness you have to liberate yourself from the shackles of self aversion. And notice any part of you that's like, er, I don't know if I can do that. And then so if you're if there's a, a rub there, like, uh, I really want to believe that I'm worthy of of um kindness and that I'm, 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 I'm deserving of love and self-love, but I don't quite believe that to be true. It's okay. You can still practice this anyway, but you have to lean into, I am at least willing. I want to, I'm willing to. The next piece is actually practicing. And so this can be done through um, metta, loving kindness practice. So I'm reading right now this amazing book, Welcome Monique. I'm so happy you're here. I had to learn to let it go. In fact, I was forced to. Oh yeah, isn't it true that um, pain is such an amazing catalyst for healing? I don't know about you, <laughs> but it's only when I've been in a lot of pain that I've actually been forced to use the word forced, Monique. I think that that can feel like that, right? It's like, I have no other choice. <laughs> I need to do this. Or, or, you know, like what happened to these two, you know, souls last week that couldn't see any other way, yeah? And so, and often that's, <laughs> that's less about our depression and really more about the way in which we sense that our depression is in some way indicative of our failing in some way. And that's another video. I was talking to another client about this as well. It's like not, it's not your depression that makes you broken. A lot of amazing people go through and have gone through, including myself, periods of depression. And some of the greatest minds I know are people who suffer from depression. It's not the depression that makes you, it's when we start to make ourselves a failure. And actually depression does do that. It inclines the mind towards this type of thinking. When we're depressed, that voice of inner criticism is so freaking loud that we gotta just shut everything down. You know, better to be numb than to be like bombarded with that kind of pain. And so, um, yeah, that's an, that's an aside, but I'm reading this book by Barbara Fredrickson called love 2.0, creating happiness and health and moments of connection. And she has, it's a freaking awesome book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend. And she talks about loving kindness or metta practice. 
And so what I'm going to do is I want to introduce this practice to you in uh, like a part two of this video because it's I'm 20 minutes in and I need to get to <laughs> the office so I can see my clients today. Um, but I wanted to introduce this concept to you of developing a practice of cultivating a warm and loving heart. And we begin this practice by bringing blessing to ourselves. And this can be done whether you feel like you deserve it or not. Remember, we just have to begin with a willingness to do that. And so I'll introduce that practice in the next video and we'll call this part one. But for now, what I'd like you to do as we're working on what it means to overcome, notice I didn't say get rid of because that doesn't happen. How do we really work with or overcome self-judgment and criticism? is by um, first shining the light of awareness on how we're talking to ourselves. So let that be your homework for now and start to shine the light of awareness on, you know, asking yourselves at different type points in the day, am I being a friend to myself or not? And just letting that inquiry show you you know, a little bit more that this is the first place we have to start. And then as we get to know that, you know, we, as we actually get to know the ways in which we're harsh and judgmental with ourselves, it begins to clear the path for transformation. And then next week on Tuesday, if I don't get here on Friday, <laughs> I'll talk to you about part two, developing a metta practice. Sending you so much love and many blessings. Please do like, share, comment if this video is served you today. And um, have a beautiful day. Namaste.